this video is the first in a series of videos where Doug Bishop is talking on panel on Zav Girl's channel. From having listened right through, I think this is one of the more valuable Doug Bishop interviews. It was done quite early on and he answers quite a lot of questions. So this particular video is going to focus on the recovery process and Adventures with Purpose's role in the recovery process. So let's dive in and listen to the first part of Doug Bishop on Zavgirl. So let's talk about Kylie here. Um, I know you're not, you're probably not able to answer everything. Adam, you had some questions though. I didn't even get to listen to your recording, so you could just ask them. Yeah, ask, uh, ask away. You could, you know, there's, Either I can answer it or I can't, and I'll be as helpful as possible. Okay. I don't go, um, I'll let you go first since you had some already. One of the questions I asked was, after they retrieved her vehicle, did they tell you to step back and not have anything to do with that whole process? Or Yes. Yes. Uh, we, we were asked to um, leave the perimeter, um, and we were not consulted any further on the uh, activity that ensued after we left wow unfortunately yeah unfortunately yeah this is one of those sliding doors what if moments anyone who had watched any adventures with purpose prior to when they found kylie would have known that the best way to go would have been to have adventures with purpose do the recovery they were so experienced at doing these sort of things and had they done it, none of the balls up that occurred would have occurred. The car would have been properly sealed underwater. Everything would have been recorded in position. Any evidence that could have come out would have been removed beforehand and the car would have been properly pulled out without any damage occurring. It really makes you question why these authorities chose to tell Adventures with Purpose to go. Were they just being sooks because they just got showed up because Adventures with Purpose found Kylie when they couldn't? Or, as some people have suggested, was it because they were trying to cover something up and they didn't want an outside agency involved with Kylie's recovery. Tyler, I'll let you ask too, since you said you don't have that yeah. much time. Man, this is absolutely heartbreaking. And I actually did an image of your footage, Doug, where I enhanced it. And this was on Saturday. I did it live on the air. I took it to Photoshop, enhanced it. I circled all the things that I could see in the vehicle. I clearly oh. saw a MacBook. I circled that. I clearly saw a hairbrush, including the little gold spot. I circled that. I clearly saw the MacBook charger. I circled that. And so it was absolutely no surprise to me yesterday whenever I see an image from the water that I again enhance and I see those same items laying at the bottom of the lake. And I just have a hard time understanding how is this possible. And some of the feedback that was coming my way was like, oh, FBI promised they were searching this area, blah, 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 blah. So could you talk a little bit about how does this possibly happen? And then again, talk about the protocol that some of you guys typically do, which would be to put nets around the windows, I think, or whatever that yeah. looks like so those yeah. items don't disappear. I do intend on going through some more Ed Wallace stuff because he is phenomenal when it comes to forensics. But one of the things that sticks in mind for me that he mentioned in one of the videos that Judy Ron did in relation to Kylie's case was that he mentioned that whoever was in charge of the recovery should have sent divers back in to clear the area after the vehicle had been recovered. But not only that, I believe it was possibly Barbara Butcher in this instance and not Ed Wallace one of them mentioned on a Duty Ron video that the recovery process should have been filmed from the very beginning. They should have had divers under there recording the entire pro process. 
in which case they would have recorded the moment those in things came out of the vehicle and could have then retrieved them. Clearly, none of that ever happened. Um, you know, obviously, this is a tough topic. You know, are we we have to work with law enforcement all across the country, and it's never, um, you know, we're, we're pro law enforcement. However, um, these are these are this is evidence that has been displayed to the public, and these are issues that um, you know these things can't be hidden and they're not, you know, there'd be millions of people that are now aware of this situation. And as respectively as I can put it is uh, when we come into this, most jurisdictions that we work with, they recognize the experience that we bring to the table in dealing with these particular matters. Uh, you know, when it comes to preserving the integrity of evidence underwater, recovering of a vehicle, there aren't many more experienced than us. Right. And uh, it, most agencies and departments tend to depend on us to command these operations. Unfortunately, you know, that didn't take place here. You know, you had CHP, FBI, as well as several other agencies that were involved here. Uh, they did what they thought was best. You know, however, you know, they don't do this all the time. Um, you know, had we done this, absolutely, the vehicle would have been recovered um, differently every step of the way. Um, mm -hmm. it, but again, that falls on us doing it every day, all the time. We're no stranger to these underwater vehicle forensics removals, as well as protecting the integrity of the evidence. Uh, that's our main focus when, what, when we're doing what we're doing. You know, this particular operation was conducted by individuals who, you know, maybe have only done this a few times in their entire career. Um, and also not under this type of case, you know, yeah. and maybe it was just, maybe it was just a stolen car that was ditched and, you know, there's no thought into, Oh, what may happen or what can't happen. And, um, so it's just it, what that comes down to is us being way more experienced in, in this, uh, area than they were. So the answer to your question, you know, no, we weren't, we were told to leave. Um, and we were not consulted about how it should be done. Doug was trying so hard to be nice and be diplomatic about the recovery process. He's basically said there were far too many cooks in the kitchen and they completely effed up the whole process. And it is interesting to note, and I can't remember where I've heard this said, but it has been said possibly also in relation to or from Judy Ron's channel, that law enforcement are not adequately trained when it comes to forensic recovery of vehicles underwater. So basically these fools had no idea what they were doing and they were too arrogant to ask an experienced crew even for suggestions on how to do the recovery. Instead, they jumped in, boots in all, completely screwed up the recovery, lost evidence in the bottom of the reservoir, and didn't even bother to recover it. I think Doug was extremely nice here, because I certainly wouldn't have been nearly as nice as what he was. You know, I would have with the windows open, you, so you take a controlled environment like that, where you have windows open, you have no current, and you have wonderful visibility, which we hardly never have. You know, yeah. Um, if you've seen any of our episodes, you you you've seen us um, in some really harsh, deadly conditions. I watched one of your episodes today. It was muddy, 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 murky, murky water. Protecting evidence, and you know, so had I been in charge of this operation i would have one elected to slowly and methodically remove whatever evidence could be obtained through the windows once that is done i would have sealed the windows up and i would have recovered the vehicle on its roof i would have never um uprighted the vehicle underwater I uh, once see. you do that yeah when, 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 once you do that you open the door you open the door for a lot of things to go wrong and again you know these this is knowledge that and wisdom that we've pertained uh obtained from doing this so often and you know they they just don't do this that often so firstly what he's saying about water clarity is that because the water was so clear 
it was really straightforward or it should have been straightforward to document the position of every item that was in that vehicle before moving it and because you could see everything also then carefully remove each item so that it wasn't damaged or lost so anything that was in reach from outside of the vehicle so that you know it wasn't damaged or lost this is something that isn't always possible to do if the world is too murky and you can't actually see what's under there in which case you would just straight out seal the vehicle is my understanding at least so he's made a good point here they really should have documented the position of every single thing that was in that vehicle before they even moved the vehicle they should have then removed any evidence that was within reach so anything within reach of the windows of the vehicle should have then been removed and bagged as evidence and then the vehicle should have been sealed and removed while on its roof and don't forget here this is a reservoir bottom so removing it on its roof would have had minimal impact on the inside of the vehicle because the bottom itself would have been fairly smooth it was a muddy bottom so you may have got additional mud into the vehicle from the open windows but in terms of any damage or anything like that that would not have occurred and we've heard this said sorry the kitten is playing and it's just not worth me stopping while she finishes playing we've heard it said by other professionals that that is the forensic process that should have been carried out and if you go back and watch older videos from adventures with purpose there is a specific video where they did precisely that thing they sealed the vehicle using tarps and magnets so that nothing could come out and obviously it would prevent mud from getting in and then they removed the vehicle on its roof and don't forget also there is if there were concerns for dragging the vehicle on its roof on the bottom of the reservoir perhaps if the bottom was rough which it wasn't but let's say it was hypothetically then you also have lift bags which allow you to lift the vehicle directly straight up using these big massive airbags and then float it to the so shore so there were many many options for properly retrieving the vehicle I mean, did they give you a choice? Did you guys a choice to retrieve it, or did they just? Oh kind no, of take oh, no, 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 no. I, I prefer to do it because I, you know, I'm. This is what I do. You know, I recovered yeah. vehicles. I've recovered vehicles my entire life, being in the towing industry. So, um, and then by doing this so many times with adventures with purpose, um, we're we're pretty darn good at it, and we're we understand what can and can't go wrong, and you know the 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 steps you need to take to preserve evidence. You got a window open. You need to remove that evidence if you can, if not seal up the vehicle before you even touch the vehicle. Um, and again, that comes down to us having a lot more experience in this field. Mm -hmm. Well, obviously, they would never say because they're too gentlemanly to say it. But I would be very curious to know what the actual interaction was when they were asked to leave. Because from past history... I've seen instances where Adventures with Purpose have discovered a vehicle underwater, law enforcement have perhaps asked them to leave and they have offered to do the recovery and explained the amount of experience they had. So I'm wondering if they had the opportunity to mention how much experience they'd had or whether they were just completely 
stonewalled and told to go. And I also can't help wondering, I know Doug is relatively outspoken and he will come out and say what needs to be said, but he's also quite a nice guy. And I keep wondering if, based on their past history, if had Jared been there, he may have been perhaps a little bit more assertive with authorities about the possibility of them doing the vehicle recovery. Something we'll never know, but it is such a shame that whoever made the decision chose to send Adventures with Purpose away and to then just have this complete string of utter, utter balls-ups in terms of recovering the vehicle. Wow. Well, I, I appreciate you guys, sh- you sharing what your process typically is. It seemed to me, too, that there there was a little bit of animosity from the way that the law enforcement spoke about you guys during their press conference. I think you guys maybe settled that, whatever that may have been the next day, because I know you were working with the team, yeah. and giving them some pointers on how to use that that mm-hmm. sonar. Uh, who do you think is responsible for, for the after dive to make sure that none of that evidence is sticking around? The commander that's in charge there of the scene, um, you know, which we know we have CHP, FBI, Nevada County, Placer County, um, whoever that entity was that was in charge of calling those shots. And I, I, I you wasn't, in that, I don't, I wasn't in that perimeter, um, you know, as, as a spectator at that point, which we were turned into spectators, um, you know, it, it, it looked like they were, they were doing the best that they could. I know in hindsight, that is not, you know, w- wasn't a, a good job, but, uh, you know, for, for the type of experience they had, you know, they just, they did what they could. I liked Tyler's comment about the animosity from law enforcement. And you know what's really ironic? The fact that Sam Brown and Shannon Moon, in their positions, should actually be team players. A good leader is someone who is a team player. And yet both of them tried to take credit for Adventures with Purpose's find. Both of them tried to play it down And essentially, Shannon Moon was saying they found Kylie because we told them where to look, which is utter, utter rot. Both Shannon Moon and Sam Brown were just sooks over the whole process. They should have been thanking Adventures with Purpose. They should have been acknowledging the work that Adventures with Purpose did. And I think Tyler is totally correct. They were arseholes. They truly were arseholes. And of course, what Doug is saying about lack of experience is spot on. And I think there is also some arrogance there from whoever was in charge of the recovery process. They clearly didn't know, didn't have the faintest clue what they were doing. But they were too arrogant to ask advice. Instead, they just barreled in and just did what they thought was the correct process, possibly. Either that or it was an attempt at a cover-up. And they completely screwed everything up. So perhaps it is something in the area that being a team leader doesn't make you someone who works as part of a team. So this is where I'll stop at this point. I've broken the whole video down in terms of questions and answers. So this is one of the shorter videos in the series. And I think it's fair that's about 20 minutes anyway, so it's probably a good amount of time. And there's still plenty of information there for us to digest. I think... It's important here because Doug is not so restricted as he was in later interviews. 
So he is m- far more open within the discussion than he was at a later date. So thanks for listening. Please hit the like button. Please also, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe to my channel and leave a comment below.